I'm here to interview Kathy Lundin, who has decided to run for the first Middlesex District State Representative um, position, previously held by Sheila Harrington. So, Kathy Lundin, how are you doing? I'm doing good. good. How are you doing? Good. Now, tell us why you decided to seek this office. Well, because I'm, uh, I want a successful society for my grandkids, and what's happening today is not going to make it a success for them. They need the same opportunities me and you had, and that's why I figured I can't do it at my kitchen table, nothing will change, so I'm going to give it a whirl at the State House, where that's where things will change. Okay, and, and what do you think are your qualifications for my seeking qualifications the qualifications are just being a citizen and living mm -hmm. in this society that's not working. Mm -hmm. But if you mean more formal, mm -hmm. like education, so I did graduate from high school. I went to Salem Hospital School of Nursing, three-year degree in nursing. Then later I went to Riviera, got a BSN in nursing. Then, you know, I thought maybe I communicate a lot. So I'll go for a communication degree in healthcare at Boston University. Uh, along with that, I did serve on the Board of Nursing for five years, which means I was your boss. Um, you, trouble. Uh, you know, I'm on the town committee now for the building committee. I've done the usual Girl Scout kind of mm, thing yeah. growing up, sure. you know, the usual. And what political party are you representing? I'm just an independent. Just There's an no independent. political party that I'm affiliated with. No political party, okay. And what do you see as what you bring to the state house? What, what do you plan to do? Well, the more I thought about it, there's probably five things to concentrate on to make society a success. It's the education of our kids, our economy. We need some law and order. Um, we need a decent health care system, and we basically need government out of our lives. Government overreach is just way too much. Okay, well, law and order, what do you, what do you see there? Law and order, criminals, there's consequences to criminality. So you have to enforce the laws, and people that choose to be criminals need to suffer the consequences. They can't be out running on the street mm -hmm. doing more mm -hmm. without some type of consequence. So law and order involves the Second Amendment. Are you pro Second Amendment or? Yeah, against? I'm pro Second Amendment. My whole family's pro Second Amendment. See, I have my LTC. My daughters have their LTC. And, and what does that mean? License to carry. Okay. Yeah, we are proponents of the Second Amendment. You okay. should be able to defend yourself. Okay. Um, even, oh, yeah. It's even unsafe going in a mall. So when I think about it, I don't want to really be shopping in a mall having to face. Uh, some crasher and smasher without <laughs> trying to protect myself. Okay. Uh, what do you see in the economy? The economy, inflation is outrageous. Families can't survive. The cost of groceries are ridiculous. Um, gas, you can't even make it to the grocery store, some families. So um, as far as on a state level, I think the House Ways and Means Committee would be the committee to get on, dealing okay. with taxes and costs and Social Security, and uh, I think that's kind of the committee I'd like to get on at first. Okay, and healthcare, your uh, good background in healthcare. Well, healthcare is uh, it's a broken system, and the problem is regular people that come in that need medical help have a long waiting time in an ER that is filled up with our mental health care mm. patients that just aren't getting the care they need. So everything snowballs. And then the staff doesn't have the supplies, and things just snowball. And healthcare is um, just a system that needs fixing. And government interference in healthcare has been a big cause of the debacle okay. in that system. Mm -hmm. And uh, what about government overreach? I mean, the big thing today is vaccine mandates. But what's your position on vaccines? Um, I don't care if you get a vaccine, I don't care if you wear a mask, I don't really care what you do. The government shouldn't be telling you what to do, but I base my opinions on what I've lived through the first surge and what I see now, and I walk away with being vaccinated does help. The unvaccinated suffer much more than the, the vaccinated patient does, so I base my judgments on that. As far as the masks, uh, surgeons wear masks to protect the patient when they sneeze on them. The masks don't necessarily protect from the virus. Okay. And I think in the future we're all going to have some sort of pulmonary issues from wearing the masks for two years. Okay. I don't think it was a good decision. 
a lot of the decisions weren't good during that. Mm -hmm. Okay. What I think people suffered. Right yeah. people that need a test and stuff, it's come back to uh, haunt mm -hmm. us from mm -hmm. putting general care off. Mm -hmm. Do you think the politicians got too involved in the COVID situation as opposed to public health, leaving yeah, it in the public of health? They did. Yeah. Mm. And one of the two people who really got involved were Biden and Harris. But regardless, my opinion is do what you want. And yep. the government should not be mandating anything. But in the end, your decision may have some consequences, so make your decisions, but realize there are consequences to your health decisions. Okay. And education is part of your... Uh, education is uh, pretty... has some issues. Mm -hmm. I guess the biggest one today would be calling parents terrorists. Uh, CRT in the classroom, I mean, I was pretty laid back about CRT. I thought it would be a... Uh, issue that would kind of go away, a fad. But when our school committee pays over $100,000 for a company like Firefly to come in and teach diversity and equitability instead of fairness, equal opportunities, um, there's a problem. And then when you hear exactly what they teach the kids, what our kids are learning, that's a problem. And that needs to be changed. But um, that comes from a frame framework at the state they work with in for diversity and equity. So I would think that framework needs to be worked on or okay. deleted and schools just get back to fair education with equal opportunity for everybody. Are you for school choice? Of course I'm for school choice. Parents shouldn't be uh, forced to put their kids in a public education system that they're not satisfied with. Mm -hmm. And parents should have access to the school committee, to the administrators. The administrators should meet face to face with parents, but I will say tax money should follow the child where he goes, and not just to another public school, to mm -hmm. any school of their choice. Mm -hmm. okay. uh, my only issue might be with a religious school because they're not the tax, 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 yes, they don't yes. pay taxes. They don't pay taxes, and mm -hmm. why am I tax yeah. dollars going to mm -hmm. a, mm -hmm. to a place that doesn't pay taxes? Nice. That makes no sense to me. Is there any one group that you're um, considering concentrating on? One I think group if of we people. try and work on those systems that I mentioned, um, everyone will benefit. Mm -hmm. I just find veterans are affected by the economy, homeless kids, elderly. If we can get the economy going in the right direction, they'll benefit. Mm -hmm. Education, if that gets going in the right direction, our kids will benefit from it and perpetuate a successful society. Concentrating on one group does a disservice to all the other groups. Of people. Of people. Mm -hmm. So I think dealing with the systems is a better plan. Okay, and I didn't hear climate in here. No, I tend to prioritize. And at this junction in the world and in our state, the climate is at the bottom of my list. Mm -hmm. At this time. At this time. <laughs> I do believe, yes, climate is something we have to concentrate on. But when we're putting windmills, when they're all done in the ground, what are we leaving for our generations mm -hmm. to deal with? Our trash. So that to me isn't a situation, isn't a solution. Maybe in five or 10 years, when the other systems are up and running effectively, then we can co concentrate more on the climate. Okay. Priorities now are what I just said. Climate is at the bottom of my priority okay. list. Plus. Just as an addendum, what really bothers me about climate, it's all about people, you hear our environment, our environment, our land. And then you drive by our hillsides, not in this particular part of the country, are loaded with windmills. Our grass and pasture land are loaded with solar farms. That is not attractive. Mm -hmm. Me, I would rather see a pasture and a hillside. Mm -hmm. okay. We're not doing anyone or anything service. Anything else you'd like to say? Um, I don't think so. I think that covers it for my opening introduction. I okay. right. would like to say thank you to the people who signed my papers today. It was nice to be out and about and meet the people of Pepperell. They were very nice. And I thank you. Okay. And I'll see you around some more. And you're open to debates? Oh, I love debates. Bring it on. <laughs> I'll, I'm ready. Are you going to be the moderator? I
I doubt it. <laughs> well, if you are, I want questions before. Oh, you want the Biden model? I do. Pre screen questions? Yeah. Handpicked yeah. audience? Yep. Okay. All right. You got to get in touch with the other candidates. Okay.